So first of all, I think it's important to emphasize a little bit more the attitudes for meditation. Because um, like without the right attitude as preparation, then meditation is often a struggle or effort. But if you have the right attitude, then meditation kind of just flows out of it. It's kind of like going to sleep. If you try to go to sleep straight from like playing a football game, it's just going to be an effort to try to fall asleep. But if you're already relaxed and sleepy, you just kind of drift off. So meditation, in a sense, is kind of like sleep because unless you're doing like an active meditation, like visualizing this or that for a purpose, but if we're doing meditation to realize the self, where it's more about realizing the nature of the mind or going beyond the ordinary state of fixation on appearances, then it, it's that balance of the will to stay present as well as the letting go of descriptions and words so that you kind of get naturally uplifted. So just like with sleep, you cannot, you cannot actually do sleep. So true meditation, in a sense, you cannot do but you can prepare, right? You can set the right attitude so that the meditation can happen. So example of a good attitude would be, or to, to clear yourself from the football game of life, is simply to spend like two, three, four minutes before you actually quote unquote meditate on the self by tuning into the attitude of not wanting anything from anything. So just relax your body and your mind, take a breath. And just let your experience be as it is. And actively kind of say to yourself a few times, like, I don't want anything from anything. So whatever the appearances, the experiences may be, you don't want anything from anything that arises. That includes getting rid of them or trying to quiet them. You don't want that either. So you just, you don't want anything. You don't want to take anything from anything. Another thing you can say is I need to neither accept nor reject anything. Nothing need acceptance and nothing needs rejection. I don't need to reject or accept anything. It's essentially the same attitude. I don't want anything from anything. So we just kind of relax deeper into that freedom from fixating on anything. Just being kind of loose, having your attention be loose. Realizing that meditation isn't even something that we do, like we don't do it with our bodies, we don't really do it with our minds. No matter what the perception is that we have, it's already included in a natural state of meditation, natural intrinsic awareness. So now that we're just kind of chill and relaxed and not pushing or pulling at our experiences. There's kind of the train of thought that developed the other day. And it was along the lines of what if, you know, people get so confused with all the terms, like words like awareness or I am or God. Well, the purpose of meditation 
is to experientially recognize and in time with practice be able to maintain more an awareness of the self whatever that might be self is also just a word so what's the actual what's the actual thing what's the actual experience that we're looking for when we're trying to meditate on the self and here's just kind of an alternate approach it inevitably uses words but kind of deviates from the conventional terms. And that is basically, to, as, as you're not trying to reject or accept anything, you don't want anything from anything, you're not pulling or pushing. You kind of begin to identify that which doesn't change changeless element as part of your experience exactly as it is now without even trying to for now at least isolate the changelessness so don't turn it into a thing but you just recognize the ongoingness of yourself in other words the ongoingness of experiencing the continuousness of experiencing we could say it also it's the continuousness of experiences when we fixate on an experience and give it a label then the next experience is different from the previous but what they both have in common is that they're part of the continuum of experience. So see if you can get a sense of ongoingness, such as I'm experiencing right now. I'm still experiencing right now. I'm still experiencing. Well, what do you know? I'm still experiencing. Hey, I'm still experiencing. So you see, there's a constancy, there's an element of continuity, of ongoingness, of continuousness. And if you can kind of lock on, gently lock on to the ongoingness, the consistency of experiences. And you see that experiences are included in that view. It's kind of like the thread that connects all the beads. And just check in again, I'm still experiencing. There's a continuous quality about experiencing. And if you can just get a sense of that continuousness without calling it awareness, although you could, without calling it I am, although you could, but beyond the words, just again, checking in, like just short moments checking in, hey, there is still, I'm still ongoing. Like that, I'm still here, I'm still ongoing. And yes, experiences are part of the dreamscape, part of the canvas of what is ongoing, but the ongoingness itself can be noticed, which is the changelessness. And then if it's real, if we want to find out what we are, if it's equal to reality, it must be changeless. So if you have a quiet mind, you could just focus on that sense of what doesn't change. But then if experiences come in, if you're noticing an experience, even a perception of visuals or sensations, then you don't have to lose touch with the changelessness because you don't fixate on changelessness as a thing, but rather you open up to recognize that everything is part of the continuum. So you get a sense of the continuum, which includes all experiences, nothing distracts it because every experience is just another confirmation of the ongoingness of that stream of consciousness or that stream of being or that stream of experiences. So we don't have to make a distinction. 
between this experience or that experience. We don't have to try to isolate the self. We just kind of rest in the obviousness, the naturalness, the obviousness of the changelessness of ongoingness. Ongoingness is constant. And it's all inclusive because everything is another part of that ongoingness of experiencing. So nothing ever leaves ongoingness. There's nothing apart from continuousness. Everything that appears, that is noted, that is noticed, is part of ongoingness, of continuousness, perpetualness. So just perpetually, for short moments, keep noticing the perpetuity of continuousness. And so that way you don't have to call it by a, a name. You don't have to call it a thing. It's more like a verb. You're just noticing the, the constant verb of experiencing, the constant stream of ongoingness. I'm still, I still, you could say I still exist now. I still exist now. I still exist now. And again, that incorporates all experiences and sensations. The sensations cannot distract, cannot delete the ongoingness of being or perceiving or perception. Everything is just another bead on the string of continuousness. So it's another word for changelessness. But changelessness can turn more into a thing. But as you allow for all your experiences to just arise and you just notice, hey, this is part of the stream of perpetualness perpetualness, perpetualness. Right now, things are going on. But right now, even though the sensations have changed, there is still the going onness. It's still going on. It's still happening. It's endless, continuous happening. And so there is an element of, of stability that can gain some momentum in that recognition. That doesn't have to push anything away. It's all inclusive. And nothing can delete it. Nothing can prevent. In fact, every sensation confirms you're still ongoing. I'm still ongoing. Experiences are still ongoing. And as you keep doing that subtler and subtler, and you see that everything is included in the perpetualness. A certain drawing in may happen where your attention becomes aware of something that could be called more changeless or stable, like an absorption into that stream of abidance. But then if perceptions occur again, if there's sensations or thoughts or disturbances, then you just recognize again that the disturbances are actually just that ongoingness. They are that flow of continuousness. It just proves that you're still ongoing, that life is still ongoing. So you don't focus on what's appearing, but you also don't reject what's appearing. But what you place your attention on is the fact that it continues to appear. So there's a freedom for the appearances to change. The whole time doesn't matter because you're not fixated on what appears. You're just noticing that it continues to appear. Is it still appearing? Yep, appearances are still appearing. Sensations are still sensed. Thoughts are still happening. And so the subtler you kind of rest in that noticing of how continuous you are, the experience of time and separation changes into the experience of seamlessness indivisibility, non-duality, and sort of an eternity, an ongoingness, therefore also timelessness in a sense. Past, future are just thoughts that are part of the present ongoingness, the continuousness of the continuum, 
of being and knowing and experiencing. So again, instead of trying to focus on a thing or a concept or a word, you just notice that you're still ongoing and you're still ongoing and I'm still ongoing. Whatever this is that's here, experiences, still happening, still happening, still happening. And in that awareness, shifting away from fixating to noticing the constancy of the stream, the perpetualness of it, there is a, a stillness, but not as a thing, just a stillness as a natural experience of perpetuity, of endlessness, of timelessness, that's fully inclusive of everything that is part of that ongoingness. You can't separate any of the sensations out of the ongoingness of your experience. It's instantly part, it arises as part of the continuousness of being. And there's a sense of isness in that, stability of, of existence that is not a thing separate from what appears. It is the continuousness of appearances that is the existence. What are you noticing? I'm inviting responses. And like the beautiful thing is it can kind of become this radial awareness, like this continuous perceptual openness that includes my hand movement and your speech and your thoughts, because you can notice that nothing is interrupting the continuousness of being, the continuousness of existing. So you can talk about it while you're recognizing it. It's just a subtle ongoing, and every moment proves it. Like me speaking, it's not an interruption. It is the ongoingness, right? It's just another sensation that proves you're still being. This is still. So the ongoingness is changeless, but it's not a thing. It is inseparable from the things. Mm -hmm. It feels like space, but not like a space, like the quality of space, mm -hmm. like the essence of space. And it's actually good when because having a lot of body sensations, it's actually good when they're appearing because you can like notice the, um, the, I love that word you were saying, perpetuity, how do you say it? Perpetuity. Perpetuity, you can actually notice like the perpetuity of like the quality of space versus the, yeah. the changing kind of sensations that come up and how like um, non-constant they are versus how constant the quality of the space of it is. Cool. I love that you make it sound so natural, you know, it is very natural, it's ongoing. So when you experience it in such a natural way, it just, there is like no resistance to anything. So right. it flows really good. So wherever you want to put like your attention to, it just potentializes it more. Yeah. So it's really nice. It felt it. It felt like at ease and natural. Cool. Mm -hmm. I love that distinction. Nice. Yeah, it's a natural continuous continuousness. I love the thing about the verb mm -hmm. yeah. and how that, like, in a way, it brings it like ends up becoming a noun. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Like it's a verb at first, and then there's like this subtle like pause, I don't know, mm -hmm. pause, but like... Continuousness, the noticing of continuousness turns into like changelessness. To one thing, yeah. Right. And it reminds me, I remember I was like in the passenger seat driving with someone and I was looking at all the stuff, but I was like facing the window directly. So everything was going really fast in front of my view. And I could like do this and like track everything like this or I could just like let it all go in front of it cool. and I felt the difference between like 
seeing stuff and just looking and like and how the looking was actually more sort of like self-aware and just that shift of like that's a great analogy to just like and then it's like oh i could just keep tracing that inward actually to just like the verb itself of experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh tuning into the difference between like a noun and a verb is really cool for this because it's like instead of awareness sort of as a noun it's like you're kind of awareing like a verb and it's kind of going consistently cool yeah yeah i feel that too because when you do it as a noun you kind of like uh put it in a box it's, it's duality yeah yeah it's this and not that exactly but awareing you can't Everything is that. It feels to me like it, I've been doing the practice of like who who is it that is aware of that? Who is it that feels that? Who is it that um, prefers that? And the place where that delivers me to feels like the same place that this delivers me to. Like, if, so is that? Do you think the same like that same stillness, the same like space, or that same like before the eyes, before the eyeballs? For the senses, that like cup, mm -hmm. is that the same place? Well, it's not a thing, right? It is, though, in a way. It's like a, like you arrive. That's what it feels like, mm -hmm. like, like a seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, just be careful of calling it anything. Mm -hmm. What I also love about this technique, it, again, it's like. It's so natural, so you, you don't have to, like... I mean, you could live your life or do your things or, you know, flow in life. Whatever things you have to do, and you, you, if you keep momentum at this practice, it will just happen so naturally, like, in everyday life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such a good so point like about that. sleep. I love that. It is just like sleep. Mm -hmm. Like, you can... Like, it, it comes to you once you, like do all, once you prepare for it and rest and do it and like commit to it basically then it just arises i love that so to shift more to the continuousness then you also begin to sense like that the perception of the body is what actually is is that stream of ongoingness the body is just mm -hmm. fluctuating thoughts and sensations but so the more you recognize that, the more you become that, the more you feel like you are that ever present. This way kind of like bypasses the mind's tendency to hijack meditation. Right. Kind of like the mind is so used to crystallizing into objects and like fixing on yeah. things. And then it can try and like fix on awareness or fix on like beingness or I am. Yeah. Or you kind of like go behind that or before that. Yeah, so no fixation necessary. Mm -hmm. Natural, nice. Naturalness becomes stable. The recognition of naturalness becomes stable, naturally. Mm -hmm. I think recognition is such a key word to tune into. Because it's not like we're doing it or obtaining it or meditating. It's like literally this recognition that's happening. And I also really, um, I think it was very powerful the way you started saying um to not want anything from anything it was like a total like boom like you drop in yeah and then so when you get a sense of the continuousness then becomes that naturalness becomes naturally stable like like you can kind of just rest in it like you're locked onto it but not as a thing right it's just ever ever obvious then you can notice when you start to lose that, it's because you fixate on something within the stream and you isolate it as an object, as a separate thing you give it a name. And it's because you want something from it. Mm -hmm. Like, because there's tons of perceptions like the light here and the sh shadows and the wind, but they don't pull you out of it because you don't want anything from it. So if, if the attitude can be adopted to everything, that you don't really don't want anything from anything, that's why so many teachings talk about non-attachment or non-desire as a direct avenue to knowing what you are, revealing what is. Because it's non-fixation and therefore the naturalness of your ongoing beingness is not distracting. 
to that distracted from. And it's amazing also because they start to lack reality as you uh, allow that naturalness just to be as it is and not want anything from it and stay in that stabilized presence. They start lacking reality. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, their unity is their reality. Mm -hmm. But they don't have separate reality as things. Yeah, or like substance or like meaning or like... Right, yeah. yeah. Another good question to ask oneself is, do I want to live in what's actually real? Or do I want to live in a bubble of delusion? And so if I want to live in, as, and by what is real, I have to realize what has isness and what does not have isness. So if we just scan our present experience, I pull our attention back for a moment and ask ourselves, what about my experience actually is, like without a doubt? And you'll see it's the ongoing nature of it, it's the mm -hmm. constancy of being, of ising. And that ever abides, nothing ever destroys it. Even distractions are confirmations of it. Distractions cannot destroy the continuity of experience. So, our direct experience has an isness to it. Isness itself has isness. And individuated thoughts don't have any isness other than confirming isness and not being separable from that isness. But when we project things to be external, out there, separate, so they have their own independent existence then we lose sight of what actually is. So we're not living in by and as reality. And what's the point in living in a world that lacks business? You just realize that you want to live in and as and by that which actually is. Suddenly, that natural stability seems appealing and you realize that oh, things will just kind of appear seemingly arising in and disappearing into the isness and they'll take care of like there'll be something that takes care of that there'll be a natural sort of enjoyment of it but I don't have to lose sight I don't have to lose vision of what actually is because then I stop living in as and by reality. And I don't want to be living in what has no isness, because that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. And the isness is ongoing. But it's cool though, like what's appearing actually helps you recognize the isness more. Nice. And that's probably why it's there. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, we could determine three levels or stages or shapes of this. Shades of this. One is when the world appears as an active experience, like there's sensations and thoughts, there's a busyness. There's imagination, there's perception aroused, it's active. Then the common stream is the perpetuity of it, the perpetualness of it. Then when that perpetualness gets highlighted, it's like all things turn into one stream and then there's sort of a changelessness. There's an experience of changelessness where the form kind of is lost, there's no there's just sort of space, stable awareness, 
of being. And there's no real attention on any appearances. And then when appearances do appear, you go, quote unquote, back into the continuumness of it. So you maintain the naturalness, the stability. And then when they naturally subside or that perpetuity or that ongoingness, that is the constant of your experience, when that like sucks you in because it becomes so magnetic, then again, you're in the changelessness of being where form kind of, the world kind of disappears. And then when you realize that that changelessness of being is in itself an appearance, then there is a timelessness before the changelessness, the one that's witnessing the changelessness has never even known the changelessness, in a sense, has never been in itself, has never been the changeless stream, has never been the ongoingness. So all appearances are turned into one appearance, and then the one appearance is used as a mirror for the absolute, where there is no time because there is no ongoingness before being. But that can arouse thoughts. So it kind of has to naturally happen. But it works just by staying with the changelessness or the ongoingness if appearances are active. It's already naturally maintained. When you say the world disappears, are you talking from the perspective of the absolute or that um, from the, when you're so absorbed in the changelessness, you're not really noticing it appearing, so it sort of disappears by default. What like, what are you? Yeah, there's just not a noticing mm -hmm. of any of the beads on the string. Mm -hmm. So perpetualness, when it sucks you in, the verb kind of becomes a thing. It becomes changelessness. But it's not an isolated thing, so it's not separate. So when appearances reappear, when experiences are noticed, then they naturally emerge as part of the constancy, the perpetuity. Mm -hmm. That is, when experience with no form, it is changelessness, so to speak. It's a changelessness of being. It's just being, aware of being. But then everything that arises is the continuum of that. Mm -hmm. It's one flavor throughout all perceptions. And it's cool to become convinced that nothing can distract it, to really have that confidence. Nothing can distract the recognition of the ongoingness of still being here, still experiencing. And it's just naturally evident. And it's the only thing that has any isness or reality. And then when desire kind of pulls you out of the changelessness, then appearances start appearing and you start kind of maybe isolating certain experiences and doing certain things and focusing on certain tasks. But to still allow this perceptual openness that notices the ongoing stability of the stream of perceptions that includes whatever appears naturally. Like whether you close your eyes or open your eyes or close your eyes again or open your eyes or close your eyes open your eyes, close your eyes, like there's a stability, there's continuousness. So yeah, just notice the ongoing nature of ongoingness. And then you're resting as the self. And then it's just a matter of 
increasing interest and brightness in it, so to speak. Like upping the awareness of it a little bit at a time. Like noticing it subtler, like more precisely noticing the ongoingness. Not as a thing, just as a reality that is already the case. It includes everything. <laughs> 